Hi everyone, hello and welcome. This is part two of my lecture on supply and demand. It is about comparative statics, which is basically referring to our analysis of how equilibrium condition changes when we have a shock to the market, so or multiple shocks. So the basic idea is we have studied lots of things that can cause a change in demand or a change in supply, namely things that shift the demand curve left or right or the supply curve left and right. And now we're interested in thinking about what's going to be the effect on price or quantity. Is it going to rise? Is it going to fall? Or maybe we don't know. Well, it turns out we can figure this out pretty easily just by knowing how to draw the correct picture. So in these slides, I'm going to show you what pictures to draw. And really, you just need to know how to draw one of two types of pic or two types of pictures. So if one curve changes, you just need to draw a single picture. Just draw a supply and demand diagram where that curve moves in the appropriate way. If two curves change, if two curves move, if the demand shifts and supply shifts, you have to draw two pictures because we don't know what is the relative magnitude of those shifts. So you'll draw one picture where demand gets the bigger shift and you'll draw another picture where supply gets a bigger shift. And these are gonna be hypothetical versions of the world. It's basically gonna give us a, a, a characterization of the outcomes that we'll, that we'll be able to ascertain as a result of these shifts. And anytime two curves move, there's something we're gonna know for sure. Either price is gonna move for sure or quantity is gonna move for sure in the, in the same direction or in a certain direction. We'll know the direction of either price or quantity for sure or, um, uh, and there'll be an indeterminate effect on the other variable. So if we know price for sure, if we know price rises for sure, the, the effect on quantity is indeterminate. If we know quantity falls for sure, the effect on price is indeterminate. Anyhow, I'll show you how we can see this from our pictures. So, uh, so we'll go ahead. Okay, so simple graphs are useful to help us understand the effects of price and quantity effects on price and quantity, reflecting from different combinations of increases, decreases, or no change in demand, or increases, decreases, and no change in supply. So there's nine possible outcomes, and I'm going to show these. First case, suppose there's no change in demand and there's no change in supply. It's pretty boring. Nothing happens, so I'm not even going to bother drawing the picture. It's just the X from the supply and demand curve. And we will have the same price and same quantity persisting in equilibrium forever until there is actually something happening. Another thing, a little bit more interesting that could happen is suppose there's no change in demand. Demand remains stationary, but we get an increase in supply. So we're going to get a rightward shift in supply. Well, if supply increases, we're essentially flooding the market with a lot of units. <laughs> this is going to push down the price. It's going to increase the quantity. All right, so here we can see that same logic graphically. So if we have no change in demand, we have a stationary demand curve. The initial equilibrium is always where the bold lines cross. So here's the initial equilibrium price, initial equilibrium quantity. We get a rightward shift of supply. We get a new equilibrium. It's right here where the dashed line crosses the demand curve. Here's our new quantity, we get a larger quantity, we get a smaller price. Okay, well, what if there's no change in demand but there's a decrease in supply? Well, now there's increasing scarcity, right? The, there's less, uh, there's fewer units available for consumers to buy. This is gonna force upward on the price and we're gonna get a smaller quantity. So here is this illustrated. Leftward shift of supply, here was the original equilibrium. The new equilibrium has a higher price and has a, a smaller quantity. Okay, suppose we have an increase in demand and we have no change in supply. Well, we're going to get an increase in price because consumers are more interested in buying the good and we're also going to get an increase in quantity. So here's our rightward shift of demand. Here is our original equilibrium. We're going to get a larger quantity at the new equilibrium and a larger price. And the decrease in demand with no change in supply. So we're going to get a loss of interest in the good from consumers. So we're gonna decrease in price and falling quantity as well. Okay, so leftward shift of demand, we get a smaller quantity and smaller price. So those are all the things that can happen if you have just one curve shifting. I mean, obviously you can have either an increase or a decrease of the supply or the demand curve. And it's pretty straightforward. Just draw the picture, draw that shift, and you'll see what happens to the price and quantity in equilibrium. Okay, well, suppose we have two, two curves shifting. In that case, we're gonna to need to draw two graphs because we do not know the relative size of these shifts. So suppose we have an increase in demand and we have an increase in supply. I mean, we don't know which is bigger. We don't know if the demand shifts further to the right than the supply, which is also shifting to the right, or if supply is getting the bigger shift. 
So we'll draw two hypothetical pictures. We'll draw one where supply gets the big shift and one where demand gets the big shift, and we'll see what happens. It'll turn out we'll get an ambiguous effect on price and an increase in quantity. Why an increase in quantity? Well, if we have more interest in the good from demanders, that's going to tend towards a larger quantity purchased, uh, traded. If we get an increase in supply, we're flooding the market with units, that's going to give us a larger increase in quantity. All right, well, what about the effect on price? Well, an increase in demand is an increase in interest in buying the good from consumers. That's going to tend towards pushing price up. But this increase in supply tends towards pushing price down because we're flooding the market. There's no longer as much scarcity. OK, well, uh, since we don't know which is bigger, we're going to draw two pictures to see the two hypothetical states of the world we could be in. So in one case, we could have a large shift of demand. So we're going to get a big increase in demand. We're going to get a small increase in supply. And if this happens, if demand is the overwhelmingly larger shift, we're going to go from a lower equilibrium price and quantity to a higher equilibrium price and quantity. Well, what if supply is the big shift? So both are still shifting to the right, but supply is going to move much further than demand. This is going to force down the price, but look, we still get an increase in quantity. So that's why we say there's an indeterminate effect on price, but there's an increase in quantity as a result of an increase in supply and an increase in demand. OK, so if two curves shift, you draw two pictures. And you just characterize the two hypothetical states of the world where demand gets the large shift or supply gets the large shift. And then you just interpret what happens to price and quantity in equilibrium. I'll run through the rest of these, and we'll see what they look like. You don't need to memorize the pictures. You just need to know how to draw them, right? Draw a big shift for one and a, and a, and a small for the other, and vice versa. OK, suppose we have an increase in demand and a decrease in supply. Well, this increase in demand is going to tend towards an increase in price, because we have people more interested in buying the good. Decrease in supply is going to make that good more scarce in the economy and the market. Those are both a recipe for an increase in price. We'll get an ambiguous effect on quantity, because the decrease in supply means there's fewer goods to be traded. The increase in demand means more interest in buying a large quantity. OK, so let's see this outcome as explained by our graphs. If we get a small leftward shift to supply, but a big rightward shift to demand, the price is getting pushed up and the quantity is getting pushed up. Right? We're going to go from this equilibrium to this one. Well, alternatively, what if we get a small increase in demand, but a big decrease in supply? Well, now we're still going to get a big increase in price, but our quantity demanded is actually going to decrease. Okay. What if we have a decrease in demand and an increase in supply? That'll give us a decrease in price and an ambiguous effect on quantity. The decrease in demand is going to tend towards a decrease in quantity, fewer inter less interest in the good. The increase in supply is going to cause is going to tend towards more units being traded. Both of these, a loss of interest and flooding the market with lots of units, are both a recipe for a decrease in price. So I'll draw my two pictures: a big leftward shift of demand, small rightward shift of supply. This is going to tend towards a decrease in price from this equilibria to this one and a decrease in quantity. Suppose we get a big rightward shift to supply and a small decrease in demand, small leftward shift in demand. Still going to tend towards a lower price. Now we're going to get a larger increase in quantity, or we're going to get an increase in quantity. More units are being traded because of this massive rightward shift to supply. OK, so we get a decrease in price, but an ambiguous effect on quantity, as shown by the two pictures, the two hypotheticals. They agree on price. They disagree on quantity, the two different states of the world. OK, so decrease in demand, decrease in supply. I mean, look, if we have a decrease in demand, decrease in supply, we know for sure we're getting a decrease in quantity, right? Less interest and less available. Decrease in quantity. What about the effect on price? Decrease in supply, this I increasing scarcity is going to tend towards rising the price. Decrease in demand, loss of interest from consumers is going to lead towards decreasing the price. Let's see this with pictures. So a small leftward shift to supply big leftward shift to supply that's going to tend towards a lower quantity and a lower price. What if supply gets the big shift? Well, let's look at that picture, that hypothetical state of the world. If hypothetically supply gets the big shift, we're going to push um, up the price, or the price is going to rise due to this sort of increasing scarcity, and we're still pushing down the quantity traded. OK, so what's the moral of the story? When there's multiple shifts, both the direction and the size of the shift matter in terms of what happens to price and quantity. We can draw a picture. We can draw two pictures, and we can alternate which side of the market supply or demand gets the big shift and the little shift, and then we can just read what happens to the equilibria. 
Whichever is the dominant of the two shifts determines the price and quantity. If demand shifts further or supply shifts further, that's going to have the, the larger effect on breaking in terms of, um, in terms of uh, going from an indeterminate or ambiguous effect towards uh, a, a stronger effect one way or the other. Okay.